Okay, in this episode, we're going to tear apart our Ford 9-inch. Now, we, we bought this because it was the proper width, and when we were deciding on how to build this project on the other side of the continent, I found one that was the right width and was in our area and some of our travel. So we picked it up. I don't know anything else other than it's a 411 and an open diff and probably has never been opened before. So in this episode, we're going to throw in a true track. It's more than likely a 28 spline because it came out of a car and we want to put a 31 spline in there because those are the axles that line up with our rims. Now, um, I'm sure we're going to run into some issues if you want to take this as a step-by-step -step. remember that we are building this in somebody else's driveway with uh, very limited tools so it's not a professional build uh, with with everything whatever but if you watch it to the very end i'm sure we can answer some of your questions like can you fit a 31 spline true track in a small bearing 28 spline nine inch here we go Stroker kit from SCAT and AFR heads shipped to Canada where we will send them to Northtown to get assembled on our 6.2, ship the engine back to California, put it in our project vehicle, then drive it back home again. So I'm gonna go scan this right now and then come back with some plates. So once we do that, we can mount our tires, figure out our stance. We're gonna tell you, you can put a small bearing race in the cap of a small bearing 28 spline with a bearing on a 31 spline true track. Look, look, look what I did! Look what I did! I'm look not. what I did! I'm not. What's that, 70 years old? You can still make it out. Like in Canada, 10 years and this is rotted. Look how yeah. per- it looks like it was just made. <laughs> yeah. Looks like they just embossed it. Yeah. It's got a little bit of dirt on the back. This is- we should just make a YouTube channel about Canadians discovering, like, rust free. Yeah. You go to, like, Africa and it's like, look at this! <laughs> just look at this! <laughs> go to Australia, like, look at this! Yeah. Why do they even bring in new vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, no wonder why they stay on the road for 80 years. Yeah. Like when you go down to Cuba and it's like, oh look, a 1948 Packard. <laughs> Mint condition. Yep. It is almost like being in a time warp, eh? Crazy. Bigger hammer? Bigger. Want me to smash it? Oh, there's a gasket. Save it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be within budget. <laughs> At least the oil went everywhere, right? It was warm enough in California that it stayed very viscous. That's pretty thick. Okay, so we got our third member here. It was soaking all day. It's a little bit cleaner. Basically, I just want to make sure that this is going to work. Otherwise, we got to go find a big bearing kit. I don't think this is going to work, but regardless, we'll take it apart and find out for sure for ourselves. So we're going to start by marking the bearing caps, make sure that they go back on the right way, pop that off, and see if we can fit this onto our Eaton True Track. Here we go. Okay, so we're back on track. The internet's a liar. The internet lies. Did you know that, Andy? I heard that one. That's not who we are, right? <laughs> that is the small bearing that fits in my cage, and this is the bearing for it, it slides on our Eaton. So you can stick a 31 
As, as in this part of the video, yeah. <laughs> we believe that you can. It might change later, <laughs> but we can put a small bearing with a or a small bearing race in the cap of a small bearing 28 spline with a bearing on a 31 spline true track. Stick it back in the case and have it work. So that's good. Now we don't have to ship things back and forth and we can use this one. Awesome. But you know what? Jacob from uh, Sally Speed Shop said he's built a couple of them and uh, he wanted to come help out. So I think we can leave this one for him. We don't have to throw that pumpkin back in there. We just need to kind of clean it. Yeah, let him clean it. Yeah, <laughs> my hands are pretty clean right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get on the exhaust. Sweet. We're going to... That's, that's not that bad. It could be worse. It could be worse. It could be better, but it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> five hours. Oh, five hours. You take the cedar fruit, sometimes it gets out of hand. And apparently this one did. <laughs> My bad. But I'm here, I'm here to build a rear end unless you already built it. Nope. No, we're working on it right now. We're gonna pull it out, clean it for you. Perfect. Yeah, and pull the front cone out and then pressure wash it, and then we're good to go. We got bearings for the side. So apparently you can fit a 31 spline third member in a small bearing house. Okay. As, as far as I knew, you can use yeah. them all. So I, I, I was wondering that too, cause I was like, oh wait, I didn't know they were different. Yeah. So we're well, learning stuff. Everything that Rich says is the Bible, so we don't argue with him, right? Yes, 100%. <laughs> and I have built- It's like, well, if Rich said that, uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. I've built at least four <laughs> rear ends that haven't blown up yet. Oh, there you so, go. You know, it's... Well, you've also rebuilt four rear ends, the same one on Power Tour that did, did blow up four <laughs> times in the matter of a week, so. Yeah, but that wasn't because of what I did. It was because we used a flux core welder for the spider gears. Yeah. Don't do that, kids. <laughs> It's almost as bad as drugs, <laughs> like legitimately. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll get this taken care nice. of. It's, I'm gonna do it by hand because we don't do you have, have a an inch pound. I totally forgot to get one. <laughs> and I, trust me, I built probably two out of the four by hand and they didn't blow up. So, so you so, only have to drive to Canada. Yeah, it's only 7,000 miles. This one is a... Uh, She's pretty gross. Yeah, a little gross. That's why I was like, can we get a new third member? He's like, you don't need a new third member. I'm like, ours is really gross. You wanna know? What we could do is uh, throw it in a fire pit. You're not driving this home this week. Yeah. We could just ship you a new one <laughs> that I can build not here in a driveway. <laughs> we could do with that. With no too. tools. No, that, we'll make this work. If not, I'll ship one. We'll see, we'll see what the pressure washer does. <laughs> I'll let you do that. No thank you. A little simple green on this thing, get a brush, and uh, get to work. So try to clean it up a little bit more and uh, make it where we can actually use it. Simple green's the best, it smells great. It's pretty gross. <laughs> There's gloves right to your right there. Like right there. Like you don't even have to move, just slightly turn and grab it. <laughs> Am I an idiot? Yes. <laughs> I won't be 100% to blame if this fails because this is really bad. I built, I don't know, probably half a dozen, nine inches. I've probably built like half a dozen other rear ends, so I wouldn't claim to be an expert, but this is the worst one I've touched by far. <laughs> Real quality components here at the Boss Garage. It'll be fine, right? Are you supposed to press this out? Let me see. So you got the nut off already? Well, not all the way, but I was hitting on this so that I could get So you it need up. a, do you have a puller? Oh, maybe, yeah. You know why I built the service truck? <laughs> yeah. I got so tired of not having anything, and yeah. I was like, I'll just yeah. bring it with me. Yeah, that's a good Where's idea. the service truck? 
It's in yeah. Georgia. That's the problem. I flew here this Nobody time. Nobody that's been here is actually from here. No, yeah. We're all from literally yeah. completely opposite side of the continent building a truck in somebody else's garage. I've never even met them. No, you don't even drive in their garage. It's like a little dishwasher, right? Oh, hey, I got some more. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. That was almost a face. <laughs> This is legit what I do in my shop for Oh, balls. really? You put like acetone in here or yeah. something, or even like gasoline works too. Yeah, yeah, there's some diesel and some gas. Yeah. There. Which we, we might do after we do this. It'll clean up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no, the bolt uh, plug is it up. Saw foam. <laughs> Bubbles. Yeah, well, that's good. That's what we want. All right. So I'll let it soak till he feels like pressure washing again. <laughs> We got a brand new big ass impact gun. Can't wait to try that. I think it moved a little. I think it moved. I feel like it's just gonna like shatter in my hands. <laughs> it's like holding like a compressed yeah. spring. Yeah. It's really scary. <laughs> wow. It's always a little sketch. That nut's coming off nice. That's a good sign. Yeah. They even send you a new nut in the kit, you know? Really? Oh, yeah. Because you don't want to reuse that. <laughs> I'm very happy we, we might bought... should have put some grease on that. <laughs> No, I am very happy we bought this thing. That was, uh, that was a good buy. That would have taken me a good amount of time to do that by hand. Yeah. Oh, nice. You can't damage that thing. That's yes, you, I did damage it. Look. Yeah. Like I said, we should have put some grease on that for sure. All right. So now we need to pay attention. See what's happening. Because you got to pay attention to what was there to know what shims worked. Just so to get it close. Yes. But remember, we have one shot because we only have one bearing. Unless we can pull that bearing off without killing it, but I'm pretty skeptical. See the crush sleeve in there? Oh, so yeah. the nice thing about these, crush sleeve is on top, and GM rear ends, they have a shim back here. Yeah. The nice thing about a nine inch is it uses a shim on the actual pinion, like carrier or whatever you want to call that um and that way you could shim it here rather than having to shim everything behind that bearing like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a lot easier to set up because okay. you can change things after you've put that together right so the thing is if you can pull the actual race off as yeah. well as the outer cage in one piece you waller out the inside with a die grinder and then it just slides on there it's not a press fit anymore right and then you set it up and check everything but in this not really gonna matter because there's no shim behind it. GM, you really have to do that. Ford, okay. you can get away without it. So you can just cut this bearing off. Yeah. So if you cut the cage off, score the thing, hit it with a chisel, you know. Because I can, I can try and heat it up with a torch and drop it off. No. Nope. Not worth it. If it was any other rear end, I would say that. Okay. All right. But being no, a nine inch, enough. nine inch is easy. You know, you can. <laughs> nine inches above average. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Like, I feel better about the project. Everything's, there was steel underneath all that crap. So when you get a full rebuild kit for these things, this one is from Motive Gear. Uh, it comes with pretty much everything you need to put one of these things together. So you have your main bearings that hold the actual, this is gonna be a true track, eating true track in. Um, you have your seal for the front of the actual pinion support. Uh, you have your, pinion support bearing that goes all the way down here in the bottom and uh you even give shims the o-ring the little loctite for the bolts and the paste to actually set up your um your pattern new crush sleeve and new nut you assemble it with the old nut which i hope rich didn't throw away <laughs> um and that way you don't wear out the new one because it's a locking nut this is not something you want coming apart while you're going down the road. That would be really bad. That's why you get all new bearings, all new races, and you know, as dirty as this is on the outside, it's gonna be brand new inside. So yeah, super nice kit. If you're gonna do it, just buy the whole thing.
And even if you don't need it all for your project, it's nice to have just in case. Just a good thing to have. Motive gear, reach out. I blow up lots of rear ends. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't. I, they, they still work somehow. Even in hotel parking lot rebuilds. All right, so I have this. Let me. One thing you want to do is verify and make sure the parts are the same. I've only really run into issues with some GM rear ends but having some weird stuff. Nine inches are pretty universal. You can uh, pretty much buy one from any year and all the parts are gonna change. There we go. So this is the actual pinion seal. And as you can see, it's gonna replace this. So you wanna make sure it is the same. And uh, it's hard to tell, it looks a little different, but I still think it's going to be correct as far as outside diameter goes. So it's a slightly different design, but it's gonna be the same seal ultimately. So we'll have to get this guy out. I think I need to put this thing in the vise anyway. Well, getting part of it. Normally these have a little flange that sits on here and you can get underneath them, but this is a different one that I've seen, so probably original. <clears throat> hey Rich, you wanna use your man strength? Not sure. It's not being very nice. So I'm gonna get my starburst. <laughs> it's like rock hard. <laughs> it's cause it's a nine inch. Oh, see that's a see that's why you keep rich around. Sometimes you're sitting there doing something <laughs> dumb. Somebody comes along and you're like, uh, we're doing that wrong. You know what you should do? Makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I will say Rich is incredibly and clever when it comes to figuring things. But the stuff you do on your channel is always like, I'm like, man, I would never have thought to do it that way, but that's really actually pretty genius. Thank you. Not to give you a big head or anything, but yeah. you do all right. I do all right. Just make up a lot of stuff as I go. I think that's what we're all doing. Yeah. We're just hoping it all works. See, I think I think so many people they they don't actually get out and do stuff because they're worried, like, yeah. oh, I don't know how to do it. But realistically, most of the time, even experienced people don't know what they're doing, and you no. just figure it out as you go. Here's the thing: if there's two ways to do something, I always do one side off camera, and then I do the other side. Because that's legitimately the first time I've done it is the other side. And you learn, yeah. And then you I know what tools you need. Then you educate people on yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I messed it up 17 times the first side. <laughs> but look, now I'm a professional. <laughs> so this actually looks remarkably good inside. I mean, because it's dirty, don't get me wrong. But like that bearing probably would have been fine. Yeah. So we, we really just should, we shouldn't have touched it, is what I'm saying. Right? So this is the old crush sleeve. We'll measure this and make the new one the same size essentially as the plan so sometimes you have to crush it in the press to get it started because they're just so hard to crush and then you crush it part of the way and then you leave like a, a few thousandths and then when you tighten it it'll tighten it the rest of the way in the actual housing so what happens when you crush it too much dude? you find a shim <laughs> and add to it which i have done before 100 okay. percent. or you go buy a new crush leaf yeah yeah, it's late. Nobody's open. So these were the cutoffs from our hooker engine uh, <laughs> mounts. They're nice and thick. And we can make them go this way now so that it's not gonna fold over like that. It'll probably be strong enough this way too, but we're gonna do it that way. What you doing there, Rich? Fixing manual Johnny's press, but the issue is we don't have a heavy enough piece to go across. So they bent the snot out of this. <laughs> and I'm just kind of making it so we can use it, but it still needs to be fixed properly. So. But we need the press to put the bearings on because I really don't feel like blow torching the new bearings right now. Although it would be you nice because it's cold. <laughs> you don't blow so I you have an oven. You toaster oven them? Yeah. Or toaster oven them, but it's not my toaster oven. <laughs> if it was mine, I would, but they're trusting us with their house. I so shouldn't put car parts in their, <laughs> in their uh, appliances. That's a good rule to live by. Yeah.
I don't know, we can be more aggressive, but... Oh, there's the ring. Oh, it actually came out in one piece. Yeah. I kind of thought it was going to have issues looking at it at first, but yeah. There you go. Good enough. I've never had one. I've just had them just pressed in. I mean, okay. So everything, everything is just assembled. Everything yeah. except for. The so we got to cut the pairing off of that still. But first, venison apparently. Well, these things here. Um, oh, don't worry, guys. I didn't uh, get one of those four or uh, three two deer that you guys have walking around here. It was two deer, I think. Yeah, it was two deer that you guys had here. But uh, yeah, these definitely aren't them. And uh, these definitely aren't really tasty. So, what I've got here now is everything cleaned except for just the actual uh, pinion yolk. So, I'm going to soak that while I do everything else. But it's about ready to start putting the new races in, the bearings in, and getting it ready to assemble and check all the setup. So, it's going to be setting the pinion, preload on that. Differential needs to go in here, and we need to set it as close as we can by hand, and then we'll be checking with a dial indicator on the backlash. And then once everything is assembled, we'll be checking the actual wear pattern on the actual gear as it meshes with the pinion in here. So it seems daunting, it seems scary, but it's really not that complicated. If you pay attention and you take your time, you could pretty much get this right, even if you've only done it like a couple of times. And even if you've never done it before, YouTube exists. So we're gonna get this thing assembled with all of the parts all cleaned up, set everything up and make it work. And uh, hopefully drive across the country to Canada at some point. Let's just be pretty wild or something. Oh, I'll test Rich for cleaning that up. So first things first is pinion. So what we're gonna do, will we need the press? I don't know, we're gonna find out. I just need something to knock that guy in. Should I use the tiniest hammer on Yeah. You got a bigger hammer. I got a bigger hammer. <laughs> you don't have a slightly bigger side, do you? Because it's literally sitting right oh, really? on that clip. They're so fast. If I bust that clip, bad things will happen. I will try. Yeah, yeah I'm going to wait for the right one. Because you don't want, so basically when you're hitting a bearing in, the outside of the housing is solid steel. That clip is what's holding all of those rollers in. If I bust that clip, we destroy the bearing. So I want to hit just the metal and the socket we were using sits just inside of the outer housing when you center it up. And as a result, you could break that clip and then we wouldn't be able to build this tonight because of that one bearing. Ooh, look, that's a custom deal. I know, right? Nice, I like it. That's a nice weld too. That's pretty good. So this little retainer clip I've never actually seen one in a four nine inch because I don't think I've ever worked on one that has never been taken apart. This kind of goes in here and locks it in under tension into that hole. But at the same time, that bearing, as you saw, was a press fit. So I don't really know why this is a thing, but we're gonna put it back on because it was in here and kind of interesting. So I guess we just push it in, then it's good to go. I don't know though. I'm learning a little bit here because I've never seen one of those. That's I'm sure some guy on the internet is going to be like, oh, they all have that. Never seen one. All right, good to go. So basically what happens, that rides in that bearing. So you see that? And then what you do is you set your pinion depth, which we're just going to leave the shims that were there, and that will set our pinion depth. You can kind of, there's tools for it. I don't have the tool to measure it and I've never actually owned it. So we're not going to do it here either. Uh, you just use how it was set up before with the shims that came off of it. So this is the old shim that goes right here. Um, and they provide new ones if you do need to adjust it at all. They also provide shims that go down here uh, if you need to shim 
the actual bearing up off of it, but we're going to do what was there. It didn't have a shim, and we're going to use this shim to set it up to, to begin with. For those who don't know, this is the ring gear right here. This is the pinion. That's why it's called a ring and a pinion. And if you use the same ring and pinion in the housing they came out of, generally, you just use the shims that were there. But we'll see. Basically, this goes in here, and you have two bearings that ride in here. So these two bearings, this race gets pressed into here. This race gets pressed into here. Oh, wrong one. But the other one gets pressed into there, and then it supports the pinion in here from two sides, and that way the pinion floats in there instead of sitting down there where it's riding on that like it is now, it'll actually float up a little bit and ride on those two bearings. So we gotta get a bearing pressed onto this, races put in this, and then all installed together, and then we'll be setting the preload on this by crushing this crush sleeve in here with the old nut compressing everything together to the correct amount of tension on the bearings. It's supposed to be like 12 to 20 inch pounds. We're gonna do it by hand because we don't have an inch pound torque wrench and this was recently calibrated anyway, so it's fine. So I'm trying to find a piece of pipe because I'm trying to try and press this bearing on there. So this is actually part number, it's a Timken LM102949. And that will allow you to put your big bearing inside diameter in your small bearing outside diameter. So the reason I, I went online and said that, can you put a 31 spline in a 29 spline housing? And people said, a couple of forums said, no, you can't do it. Apparently you can. So um, as of right now, we're halfway through and we're still carrying on as if it is possible but i gotta press this bearing onto our true track now the true track this is the upgrade um the bearing's fine the biggest upgrade is the true track the uh now we've got a posi so we can do we can do burnout competitions without doing a one-wheel peel and scaring the crap hey out of now people. The Hornet won a burnout contest with with the one wheel appeal. That's Power Tour 2017, man. It's possible. Nice. It is possible. <laughs> you lose your doubling the wheel speed cable. I'm just seeing Solomon's bed explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. We had big tires. That's fair. But True Track is the way to go. This is kind Agreed. of the the cat's ass for limited slip. So this isn't uh, discs or anything. It's not like clutches that can burn. Yeah. So it's a it's a helical style. You see these little yeah. these little gears in here that's actually a helical style locker and they handle a ton of power and they're super reliable they don't wear out yeah now the issue is trying to get this bearing on there and i'm really tempted to just put it in their toaster oven it's a new bearing right it won't smell that bad it won't smell that <laughs> you bad. just get a little bit of cancer See, that, your I, food. Can't, I can't i can't get past this little lip so i either punch it on by hand because i cannot find a piece of pipe that fits around this race and i know that do you have an old Old one off the no, because our other one is small. Size. Yeah, I don't know why are these the same size. Weird, eh? Because isn't that isn't that odd? Yeah, it's odd because I need a bigger one. Oh wait, no, you don't. Sorry, the race is further down. Okay, okay. <laughs> I promise I've done this before. I think I might put this in the toaster oven. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> in my defense, I have no excuse. Oh, that's just a venison stew. I mean, beef. You guys are going to love this. Oh, man, that looks good, man. Oh, it's good, too. Oh, let's see what thing he's got cooking here. Okay, good. So now I've basically got everything cleaned up the rest of the way. I got the races started to install in here, but I'm going to need Rich to hold it steady, or I'll hold it steady while Rich pounds the races the rest of the way in. They're most of the way in. 
but we don't have an actual race installing tool so you got to hit it on the edge which is a little tricky but that's pretty much ready to go minus the o-ring in that groove right there always a good idea to replace that with a new one that comes in the kit because that's what keeps all of the fluid inside your differential and not all over the ground um, so yeah we have to put this bearing on there and i don't think we have a piece of tubing that diameter either but maybe we do. We're just at a fab shop, so you would think there's at least one piece of tubing that fits that. So this is a hollow piece of tube. For press. It's like everything except for like the last yeah. <laughs> sixteenth of an inch. You know, the really stupid thing is, I have a fully built 411 Gear FX third member at home on the, on the shelf. I should have said, put that one in this project. That's going in the Bronco. And instead, <laughs> rebuilt the Bronco one at home with proper tools, not using a chisel as a handle to pump my busted up press that I had to fix. I dab no words, all I can do is just, you just gotta sit here and... There you go, it's done, look! Look what I did! Look what I did! I'm look what laughing. I did! I'm not <laughs> I'm very proud of you, Red. But all this is really dumb. Yeah. This is, is kind of like working in Africa. It's not great. <laughs> So now we need to cut that piece of pipe down. Yeah, you need another <laughs> one there. You need like seven <laughs> inches. <laughs> you need me to cut this perfectly square? Perfectly square now. Sorry, I busted bubble, but what? it gets bigger, does it not? Been a long time since I done this. I can, yeah, I can start it for you. At least we didn't do it. You can start it. Then what do we do? Uh, I totally forgot that because I literally ran into the same problem building the last one. It's not a problem because I have to cut this pipe down smaller. Well, big of a pipe. Well, in order to fit it in there, right? <laughs> I only have one. We're just solving problems here. It's only. <laughs> <laughs> this is not ideal. Don't don't do this. Do it the right way. So measuring the old crush sleeve, it's 0.454. New one is 0 0.509. So that's the difference you have to crush this actual sleeve. It's got this like expansion part in it that actually squishes as you tighten it. So we'll have to attempt to squish this in here, but I really like to start them in the press and just squish them a couple thousandths that starts it moving and then it moves a lot easier after you get it to start to crush found it it's right outside the door what it's is it gonna push on the cage now <laughs> just ignore it it's fine everything's it's fine not. if that part fails <laughs> not on me okay i can fix that at this point, we would have no idea who to blame on anything. <laughs> to put the ring gear on the differential now that he's got the uh, actual bearings pressed on, he's over there making something to press our bearing onto our pinion. But this now goes on here, and then we got to put all the bolts in it, torque them to spec, and uh, put Loctite on them. That's a requirement. So. That is the next step in the process, and I'm going to get started on that. So, cut to the timeline. What is the torque spec? Don't say more than 80 foot pounds. I want to say it's 85. <laughs> I really do. I said don't go more than 80. It's 80. It just says 80. It's 80. That's the only sure. torque wrench I could find. <laughs> It'll be 80 fine. and another seven degrees. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you go to put the ring gear, 
on the actual differential. Uh, what I like to do is bring it up from the bottom where you can see all the bolt holes. That way you get it lined up. And then it's a pretty tight fit. Uh, so some people heat it up in the toaster oven like what y'all tried earlier. But what I like to do is just take a like mallet and just literally tap it down and you get it to go just far enough. And then you flip it back over and you take the bolts and you space them you know, evenly around it. You put just a few in and then you'll just tighten it and it'll pull that ring gear up into place <clears throat> and seat it rather than, you know, fighting it. So there you go, look at that. We're just gonna go around and pull that gear up evenly and then we'll go back, put our little Loctite on it and then uh, torque it to spec, which I should look up. It comes with Loctite? It does. Yeah. Look, look you bought it. Loctite for nothing? You did, yeah. I saw that over here and I was like, he didn't know because he didn't open the box. Open the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Rich right now, dude. Rich does this all the time. The one socket, and just going for it rather than getting his impact. She's just like moving the socket around. I watch the YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm a fan. I know Rich. Oh, that's not right. You got a 3 8 drive? Don't do this, kids. This is the wrong thing to do. <laughs> This is our first part that we can put together. We should uh, just break clean those off. But basically, we need to set the preload on it. There's a crush sleeve in there. Stick the crush sleeve on there. And I put the other bearing on top of that. You torque that to a predetermined amount. Wait, wait. With some shims in there. You need your shim. This is the shim that came out. So you okay. start with it. And then you pop this on. Is there a up and down for? It only fits one way. Okay. Did you lay the shim? Perfect in the right spot. I did. How'd you do that? Because I've done this a total of uh, four times in my <laughs> life. <laughs> I'm gonna continue this. So I'm using a torque wrench to pull the gear up into place because I couldn't find a three eighth ratchet. Oh, torque? <laughs> and you know, I think it's a, I think it's a Harbor Freight torque wrench. So we're not gonna hurt it. It will be fine. The internet is screaming. Did you return it to zero before you put it away? <laughs> it's a Harbor Freight torque wrench, it's fine. Remember, you pounded out with a hammer. Wait, are you like going for it, going for it? I never put this on. Oh. I thought you were just playing around. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought he was just showing how it went together, not actually putting it together. I didn't This is important. It. That is important. That would probably leak, wouldn't it? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot, a lot. There, you would lose your dip oil in five miles. <laughs> And you also forgot this. What's up? That's the oil slinger. Mm. They just started doing I'm gonna, things. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> this is how you learn though. You put it apart, take it back. That's right. Yeah. This is a lot easier with an impact that lets you stop when you want to. I'm not gonna trust that impact because it just keeps on going. Okay. So that. All right, over to the other. Crush sleeve. What's this oil slinger? You see the thin side versus the thick side? Okay. The oil slinger's on top and before the seal, so you were still okay, but the oh, O-ring okay. was important. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Now you get your other bearing. So we're not putting a seal in right away, right? Like a seal on the top? Okay. Or go go to town? We have one shot. Seal goes on top and it yeah. just keeps the oil away from that. Right, right, okay. Yeah. It'll give you a lot of Loctite in this, so it might be a good thing yeah, you bought. Well, one. So if you're ever wondering about building any rear ends, there are websites about it. This one is uh, strange engineering. They make a bunch of axles and literally every rear end you want, 488, 49 inch, and then it tells you different size bolts, billet caps, every, like anything you could need to know. It tells you all the specs in one spot, like really easy to read. I use this every time I build a rear end. So if you're ever doubting a bolt, like that one feels a little weird, do it by hand so you don't Ruin your life. It says 70, but these are 
Oh. Bigger. They're both bigger bolt heads, but the thread is still 5 8 Let's do 70. Let's just do what it says. Can you hold it? I will try to. <laughs> Check it, yeah. yeah. That was fun, right? That last one. <laughs> there you go. All together. That's exciting. So this 50-something-year-old ring gear is on a brand new, really nice differential. So that's going to be really nice to drive. Sweetness. Okay, now we get to torque the schnoz of that. So just go Everything's good, right? You have every, oh, you already. I can't yeah. change it. Do yeah. you have any seal oil. oil? Oil. I put oil on the. Did, you? did I? No, I didn't. You're right. And then you I, don't do that. And then I did. You will destroy that uh, rubber seal in there. So you always want to lube up every single rubber rubber seal in anything you're putting together, really. No, can't always say that. Lots of seals. I know. It says so do not use oil. Can't say always, Jacob. The internet will eat you alive. Whoa! The Honda 2004 <laughs> CRV rear main seal 90, on the output shaft 90, says no oil. 99.99% <laughs> of the time, you want to lube up the rubber. I also sanded it down so that, of course, you start with a nice clean surface. It's almost there, though. We're close. Yeah, this is exciting. But now we get to the real technical parts where you do backlash, check wear pattern, and then you have to change everything you just did. I know. No, we're going to get it right the first time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Probably. I mean, it's the same ring opinion in the same housing. All the change was the diff, and they machine those to a very high tolerance. Yeah. Back Compared to Ford back in the day, they were just like, yeah, good enough. <laughs> so 35. This will be a lot easier to hold. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't even think I have to hold it. <laughs> it's no, no effort. One of my favorite things about the nine inch rear end is that that rubber O-ring is the seal and you don't have to oh, RTV that. Oh God, <laughs> you suck. Yeah. Not okay, Rich, not a fan. This is hammer is too small. I need a bigger hammer. People say size doesn't matter. So now it's my job. Isn't that thing terrible? <laughs> it's like, I wanna work! So now it's my job to uh, get this right. You see that? You don't want that. You want it tight. And you also want the correct amount of force to spin it. And uh, we didn't put any lube on the bearings, did we? Just, yeah, we can do that from the back side. We can, yeah. We will, we'll need to for me to... That was bad on my part. <laughs> yeah, you got you got ahead of everything I was doing. So I was trying to catch up. But Rich works fast. I do work fast. Really fast. It's getting late. It'll make its way down. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> That's going to really suck if you don't <laughs> hold on to it. Yeah, I was like, oh, you got some grip strength there. I would use the leverage and go on top. But... Here, I'll hold it. Still spins. It's definitely not on all of them. Still got lots of play. Yep. I don't think this is going to have the guts for it. <laughs> Keep going. You can spin the nut back off again and get the oil underneath. Throw a little bit of oil in there. Okay. Get over here. Any back and forth? I think that's it. I think that thing has more guts than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's barely too much. You'd have 12 pounds here. I can push it with one finger. Yeah. This much too much, according yeah. to my hand. But it's better to be tight than too loose, and I don't think this is going to wipe it out and wear it out. It's 18 inch pounds, which is just over. Oh, you have one. Well, it's, it's foot pounds, though. 
So it's kind of hard to read one. <laughs> but as long as it doesn't read like eight. But the thing is also, what? those bearings seat in as they... Right. I always so, so, set them up a little on the tight side. I just am amazed it crushed that sleeve that easy. Sometimes those are a nightmare. It's not even moving. It's not registering. Look, like that feels like it's literally like just barely tight. I would be very happy with that. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but you're going to back it off? You got to put the other nut on there. Yeah, this won't move, so it won't matter. And now we tighten it down and whatever the actual torque spec is, which is a lot. See how easy that got? So we can actually. Yeah, no, that's that's still okay. Once it's on there, you got to use the puller again. Like, right, right. So it's on there. Right. So I'm, yeah, I'm it's okay good. That. No, it's good. And we'll set it. That's perfect. I'd say I'm very happy with that right now. Yeah. What is it? 12? 15? <laughs> I think we're at 13 and a half. Yeah, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. So like what I like to do once I really think I'm okay, like take it one finger and like an inch out and push and be like, is that about 13 foot pounds? <laughs> or inch out, sorry. 13 foot pounds would be in trouble, but literally do that. It says like, that in the like instructions. Get, and guess, get, guess how much that, this isn't instructions, this is just it me. It says in the instructions, push, push it with your finger and see what you think. What do you think? Yeah. You're an inch out from the center, you push. That feels like I'm pushing 13 pounds. Don't do what I do. But I bet this will get you home. Okay. All right, so what we do now is we set this in here, obviously with the races. We take these. You took it apart, you know how they go, right? Yeah. Ish. Looks like a whole new unit. It's I'm, actually pretty beautiful. I'm really happy with this. I really, like I knew we could rebuild it, but I pushed really hard to everybody I knew. Do you have a third member? Because I knew it wouldn't be as gross as this. I asked like 12 shops in LA <laughs> and they're like, no, they're all in cars. And I was like, I have two in my <laughs> shop. Why does nobody have one of these? <laughs> when you need it, of course, it's not there. Right. And then uh, the one guy today, I'm like, do you have any third members? I need 31 spine. He goes, yep, I got a few. I'm like, can we buy them? He's like, well, what's wrong with yours? I'm like, I can't fit that into a small bearing. He's like, oh, I'll just get you the bearings. I'm like, I don't want the bearings. I just want a third member. <laughs> <laughs> but look, he made you learn something new. <laughs> it is true. So you've never built one. So never literally built. now you understand it on another level. I was missing a lot. It. Yeah. Well, I some of it. I'm gonna have to you watch. Most of it. I'm gonna have to watch the video. Now it's time to put these on. I don't know. You said you marked them. Yeah. So that was that side. Okay. So this goes on. Our bolts. Did you get our bolts? No, so let's take awesome. these tabs off. So these are the locking tabs right here. You see these guys? These locking tabs go into these little holes, and you can actually adjust this thing side to side in there, which is why one of the reasons why the nine inch is so superior. It's yeah. a really adjustable setup. So when you change gears and stuff, it's really easy. Yeah. So this guy will go here. One, wait, right here. can we do it in that vise? So you tighten that thing really tight and now you can build this thing and actually watch everything work, uh -huh. which is really cool. Like, look at that. So I'll let you do it because you've never done it and I'll just help guide you. You just snug them up. You don't need to torque them. No, just barely snug too because you need to be able to move these. Yeah. So do you usually get more or less? Ooh, that sounds really nice. Yeah, that's, that's... Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Let's try it. I'd call that good. So we got a dial indicator, so now we can check. I think we're gonna be at, what's the spec call for? I don't remember. I'm not sure. Yeah, we got eight. So now we gotta make sure that this, these are tight, right? Yeah, so now we gotta torque those, and then we gotta put the little tab in. This is already a worn ring with a worn pinion. These have already meshed together. So if you set it up at 8 thousandths, chances are it's gonna stay at 8 thousandths compared to if this was a brand new ring, brand new pinion. I always set those up just a touch tighter, like 5 thousandths. So this, yeah, I am very happy with that. That's, yeah, nice. Basically, these get held in by these little guys. And sometimes, it doesn't line up just right, you gotta bend them a little. So we'll see how ours act. But it's kind of an ingenious system that just locks these in place rather than having to do shims back and forth. 
Ford was actually thinking when they did stuff. So yeah, then we'll stun those down, torque these, and then it's time to paint some yellow paint on here and check and see what our actual pattern looks so like. Preload on the bearings, just tight. You don't really need a lot, so we'll just keep it real simple. You just need to get it to stay. Still felt nice. I might have to loosen this guy up. Second. It still feels good. So we'll tighten those and then uh, check our wear pattern and should be ready to go in the truck. I'm going to go home and sleep for a total of 37 <laughs> seconds before boarding a plane back to Georgia. <laughs> It'll be great. Oh gosh. Rich got some strength. <laughs> so yeah, use this yellow paste, put it on there, and then you'll check and see coast versus drive side and then you'll do uh if it's on the heel or toe of the actual gear and then i never memorized what's what so you look that up too <laughs> yeah just spread that i like it picasso or you bob ross happy little bob trees bob ross well it's a happy little you gear. just paint a little baby poop <laughs> It's like of all colors, what should we do? Uh, baby poop. <laughs> Got it on both sides, yeah. That, that is pretty good. Yeah. So then you'll spin it all the way around while you kind of, you, you want load. Like you don't want it to just be free spool. Yeah, yeah. And then you go all the way down in there and you'll come back a couple of times. Like you get it on there and then you come back through the, just back and forth, getting the coast and the drive side of the gear. So if you only focus on one, you'll get noise on acceleration or noise on oh, coast. Yeah. You gotta look at both the back side and the front side. All right, let's see what we got. Not much. <laughs> no. That's uh, far from ideal is what that is. That's pretty dead center, but I think yeah. it's just not transferring well. No. Because the gear oil down on that one. I got carried away with the gear oil. <laughs> Hold on. We could spray some brake clean out yeah. of that. Yeah. As much as that sucks. I think it is farther on there. You can see how far it is down here. So let's pull up a little picture and I'll show you the differences. Yeah. Okay, so luckily we're pretty centered in the tooth, but we're pretty deep. So we need to bring that wear pattern right here a little bit more to the edge and by doing that we add another shim under here and we don't have to take the seal or anything apart you just pull this off this whole section comes out and uh we add a shim and then we check it again but it is freezing cold it is past midnight jacob has three hours to go and he's got a flight to catch at 10 so we're going to take over tomorrow morning we'll uh we'll we'll just drop that out add another shim make sure it's perfect because this is kind of tedious it could take five minutes could take an hour so we're gonna call it here but jacob thank you very much Man. for your expertise uh for yeah for, <laughs> for your experience and doing it once or twice before it uh it did show so um yeah and you got a channel yeah so if you want to follow along on all the stupid stuff we do and see a video <laughs> on that nova wagon i pulled up in which is really cool uh check out sally's speed shop and that's on YouTube. And then I'm just Jacob Ross Davis on Instagram yeah. and uh, do a lot of a lot of variety of things. So right not on. just builds. We do revivals. We do race car stuff. All kinds of stuff. Nine inch rear ends. I, I, I literally have a video I haven't put together yet on mine. And it's a full floater nine inch. <laughs> this is the first Eaton True Track I've actually put in anything. Oh, nice. And I've had cars with Eaton True Tracks, but I've never set one up. And uh, it's honestly, in my opinion, the nicest driving like differential as far as putting power to both sides you could do because the lockers are violent the clutch packs wear out and they yep. don't these are just they just work and so to put one together and look at that oh. <laughs> that was junk when i showed up <laughs> this was the one of the major hurdles in getting our truck going because we now we can put our axles in now we can get our wheels on now we can get our stands proper and now we can yeah all these things that are important right we can measure the drive shaft get all that figured out for our next trip Thanks again, man. Yeah, of course. Safe travels. Um, 
I kind of want to be like your mom. Call me when you're there so you don't fall asleep. But I'd be sleeping and I don't want to wake up. So yeah. just no, I'll be fine. <laughs> this is a very low level of sleep deprivation for me. Okay. This is like a normal Tuesday. <laughs> no. Okay, so added another sim. That brings our pinion away from our ring. Now that will also affect our backlash. So we got to set our backlash again. So essentially, when we move this gear out, we have to move this gear in um, to. Cause I'm sure we got let's see one shim, my way more backlash. We we'll set the backlash again, cleaned all the oil off the gear, and then uh, we'll see where our tooth contact is. So kind of like a wheel bearing, you tighten it and then you back it off of here. Oh, that's too much. Because it's kind of a tedious process. Um, set your set your backlash. You got to tighten your cap down because it does change it slightly. You want eight thou. As soon as you check your eight thou, you can check your tooth pattern again. Rinse, repeat. You got to do it until your contact is on the teeth where you want it. We'll put up a link on where you want your teeth to go. There's lots of diagrams on uh, online where it shows you to move your pinion away, closer, farther out. But uh, same thing over and over again. We'll show you when we get the proper tooth contact and then we're ready to throw back. Okay, so you don't work past midnight because then you redo stuff in the morning. Turns out one race wasn't sealed all the way and it was this race right here. It was just up maybe a 16th of an inch. So the way my tooth contact was, it's very much on the heel. So that means you gotta bring your um pinion in closer what that does is bring that up so our depth is pretty good but um i couldn't get rid of any more shims and it's set up so that you do have to use shims so that tells me something's wrong i gotta stop take a look and what happened was jacob did ask tell me i'm having trouble seating this race can you do it rich and i said yes and then i didn't do it <laughs> I got the races started to install in here, but I'm gonna need Rich to hold it steady, or I'll hold it steady while Rich pounds the races the rest of the way in. They're most of the way in. <laughs> so I uh, took it back apart again. I used the press this time, so I used the old race just on top of the race, and I pressed it, and I got probably a sixteenth of an inch. So now we can uh, put it all back together again. So we never crushed that sleeve because that race wasn't in all the way we had that extra gap so now i can i can crush that sleeve so um jacob thought oh it it uh it was working way too soon now that's that's not enough rolling resistance we got to go a tiny bit more and it's all that this gun can do if you don't have it in the vise it kind of rattles so right now there's no there's no free play there's no space to go in between just need to tighten that up just a hair yet best thing to do is try to find numbers on your socket and then watch them spin but don't don't let them go too far there we go just a tiny bit more resistance than freely spinning it that's what we want i am 100 percent confident in that so we'll just start with one new shim Seven. We go touch more backlash. Let's see what that looks like. And we go touch more backlash. But Jacob, I admit 100% it's my fault. I did not pound that race in all the way. Doesn't make me racist. Can I say that or will I get canceled? That's a race. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's a really stupid dad joke, I guess. Oh, no <laughs> there we go. So you can see the tooth is nice, nice there. We're a bit, we can actually go a little bit less yet. We're still on the, on the heel here. 
but the, the side is looking much better. Or, uh, we could move it out a touch so we can actually get a bit more backlash. So reading with stock, with stock gears, we're okay to go to 16. I can go a, a touch more, not a whole lot. So shims behind here, move the pinion closer to the ring. Okay. And then these are threaded. So if I loosen one and tighten one, it moves the ring away and uh, closer to the pinion. So it's almost like setting the camera caster. Sorry, well, you're setting the two axes. Yeah. yeah, until I get the tooth touching in the middle, because otherwise it'll make noise. Right. Overheat or just grenade. The crazy thing is, this hasn't changed from the first horseless buggy till now. Same, same, same teeth, principle, same, same teeth, spider gears in the middle. This technology hasn't changed in 150 years. Except for like limited slip or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Angle it so that it's quiet, so that as you're finishing touching one gear, it already starts touching the next gear. So oh, there's no so like shatter. So it's not really ending a process, it's, it's yeah. always in the process of the next one. Exactly. I think we can add a shim. No. Well, whatever. So now. You add a shim or you take away, if it gets better, keep doing what you're doing. If it gets worse, do the opposite. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> so if your your contact is on the heel, then you want to bring it closer to the toe or more to the center. If I add a shim and it's going in the right direction, keep adding shims. Right. If it walks off, then you're doing the opposite. Take some shims away. Right. We stopped when we were starting to do this last night and i'm glad we didn't because i've got an hour and a half into it again this morning right yeah we'd we'd still be here yeah. jacob and i wouldn't be friends anymore <laughs> aaron's camera would be broken <laughs> there'd be a dead deer in the yard that truck would be on fire <laughs> okay so spent another two hours on it this morning and i'm calling a bit of defeat only because no matter what, I cannot get the pinion close enough to get a good tooth contact. So I'm thinking it's a housing. So since we got a transmission done here at Specialty Gear and Transmission, and he's got like three other nine inches in the shop, I'm gonna let them take a quick peek at it so we can keep working because otherwise I won't get the rest of my stuff done. So smart enough to build it. Smart enough to know when to quit and let somebody else do it. <laughs> so, so James took a look at it. He says he's ran into it before. The only pro, the only way to do it is to pull the pinion out and shim between the bearing and the um, pinion itself. Because we don't have pullers, we don't have the shims, we don't have anything else, we don't have a decent press. We're gonna let James finish it off here. Um, all the theory is still the same, and as of right now, you can still put a 31 spline in a small bearing housing. <laughs> but it's, it takes a little bit. Anyway, we're gonna leave this, we're gonna keep working on the truck, we'll come grab it again tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, we weren't too far out actually. We were just looking at the painted. We should have been watching more on the actual contact. He says it's not perfect, but it, it, it'll do for what we needed to do. He tried shimming in behind the pinion, but it actually started binding. So then he started, he ended up shimming it back out again. So he goes, that's, that's it for this ring gear. So I'll confirmed, you can fit the 31 spline in a small bearing housing with the right bearings and a little bit of know-how. We didn't get this one perfect, so if you had the choice, I'd still try and get a big bearing, but uh, it does work. Big thank you to Specialty Gear and Transmission. They're a lifesaver on getting the 95 going and uh, for setting this up while I was still working on the truck. So now we all feel a little better about everything. Now we gotta cross our fingers and see if it makes 6,000 miles. Can I just drive? Yeah. Just, I'm gonna take the car. <laughs> Make sure it's a secure load. Now, some people uh, spend money on straps. Luckily, we have these elastics in here. They're just as good as the straps. It's got a little bit of flex to it too. So, 
<laughs> yep, pretty good. All right, we got it to fit, I think. We pulled out the seals. We can fit 31 spline axles in a 28 spline housing. And we did manage to get a true track 31 spline in a small bearing nine inch pumpkin. That's not to say that it's going to work flawlessly and you're gonna to have to stick around for the rest of this series because we're gonna continue building this truck and this uh, axle will have uh, somewhere between five and 10,000 miles on it by the time we work our way through the states, take it to a bunch of shows and go home. So if you're watching this video and it's a couple years old, you can keep watching the videos and see how we did. Otherwise, um, you're gonna have to stick around for the rest of the videos on engine transmission cab and all that fun stuff to uh, see if we did a good job or not. I'm, f I'm confident in it. Not to, I, I don't think I'm gonna be too worried. We're not drag racing, so we're not lifting the front of the truck up. Basically, this is gonna be a tire fryer. There's no weight on the back. I think the tires will break loose before we break anything on that. But thanks for watching, guys. Remember, um, there are professional shops that rebuild this. If you're scared to tackle any of this or, or whatever, there's lots of good companies like GearFX that are able to rebuild your diff for you or you just buy a new one. But it is possible. If we can do it in somebody else's uh, driveway, then we uh, should be able to make, make do with some local shops and presses and whatever else. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next episode is we're going to be on the front half of this truck and that one is being edited right now So definitely stick around. We got lots of more projects out at home. The Broncos sandblasted and is in paint right now um, as of today and uh, I'm back on the C10 as soon as we get home So all of those videos will intermix to keep you entertained and to motivate you to work on your projects Because if we can do it, you can do it. And remember if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go